everybody come out. All right, everyone. Hello. Emily Roberts here, your Diamond Upline or Sideline, and we're going to dive right into the Traveler's Gift. It's the Plexus Book Club book, and I've actually been reading it, and I'm halfway through because children in real life, but this chapter so far has been my favorite, and um, the main character is traveling through time, meeting different people, and they're not necessarily successful people. Some of them aren't even relatively famous. But this person, most of you know from good old sixth grade social studies, Christopher Columbus. Does anybody remember Christopher Columbus? Um, the perspective for him given is usually negative, right? Because he, well, positive and negative. He found new land, but he stole the land because it belonged to the Native Americans. Like, there's just so many different perspectives. This perspective in the book is one I had never considered, and it applies to us in network marketing and the greatest industry of all. So raise your hand or blow me up in the chat. Actually, blow me up in the chat because other people need to hear this. If you have ever been told no, comment me in the chat. If you have ever felt weird after being told no, comment me in the chat. And if you don't know how to get to the chat, just ask for help. Somebody will help you. <laughs> okay, look at all the me's, you guys. That's just a part of this business. In case you were wondering, we're in sales. We're in sales. And it's kind of weird sometimes to be told no, but how many of you have children? And if you have children, go ahead and say, look, I have four kids, I have two kids, I have one kid, I'm pregnant, I'm trying, whatever. Put it in the comments, okay? How many times a day do you tell your child no? Uh, 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 how many times do you do that? Right? Right? We tell our children no all the time, and what do they do? What do they freaking do? They keep asking, right? They keep asking or they keep going for it. Or, I mean, they're just like, in, like they're so consistent. You're like, dad gum, did I teach all that? Like, this is brilliant. Y'all just don't give up, right? At least that's how my kids are. My children, I'll tell them no. Like for instance, Scarlett. Scarlett is two years old. She'll be three in November. She's the youngest. She's the only girl, like all the things, right? And so when she asked for a popsicle at six o'clock in the morning, I'm like, no, bro, it's 6 a.m. You ain't getting a popsicle, okay? And she loses her ever-loving mind, like full-blown baby tantrum. She, she thinks that she knows what hate means because her brothers throw that word around. And then she's like, I hate this day. I hate that. And she crosses her arms and she gets so upset. And I'm like, you'll thank me later when you don't have a brain freeze and my living room isn't painted and a popsicle. Like, just know you can have one later or when we're swimming or outdoors, nowhere near furniture, right? And they just don't get that. There's so many reasons why behind the no. Same goes for your business, my friends. When someone tells you no, most often, most often that I've learned over the last six years is that simply means not right now. It could, it could mean just not today. It could mean tomorrow. It could mean next week. It could be two months from now when they learn at their doctor's office that their blood work's a little jacked up and gut health should probably be in their vocabulary. And they're like, oh, I know a person. I know a girl. I know a gut health girl, right? And there's people in my circle that still think I'm crazy to this day. They've seen my paychecks, they've seen our house, they've seen my Plexus Lexus, they've seen the diamond jewelry, all the perks that come with it. They've seen the Hawaii trips and they still think that this is just bogus. And now that we have almost nine new jewels on our team, I feel like people are starting to go, wow, so it's not just Emily. There are other people doing this. Mind you guys, we have over 1200 jewels in this company. It's for real, in case you just needed a little wake up call. But how do you think we got there? By hearing the word no. And if we could just have some resiliency like a toddler for the rest of this month and going into August, you better believe you can come in smashing goals, right? So I want you to kind of remember that perspective as I'm telling you Christopher Columbus's story through the eyes of this author, Andy Andrews. Now, Again, this is Andy Andrews, The Traveler's Gift. Um, last week, if you were on, we did a different chapter and we talked about different things. But tonight, I feel like this is just so good for the end of the month and for all the cool things happening in our businesses, right? Okay, so uh, give you some context. They are on the Santa Ana, Santa Maria, Santa Maria. 
I clearly didn't pass social studies. So if you remember correctly, there was the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. Yes, everybody nod. If you can see me, yes. Okay, cool. So they're on the Santa Maria, all right? And if you want to think of Christopher Columbus as this strong Spaniard man, he was not. In fact, he was short and redheaded and a little cray cray. And people were like, dude, you are so extra. Just leave Spain or wherever he's from and just go with your bad self because whatever. So they're on the Santa Maria in the middle of the Atlantic. They've been on this boat for 64 days and homeboy that had the tragic accident, the main character, he has time traveled and found himself seasick on a boat. And he's listening to this crazy man rant and rave and do you see land? And he's talking to himself and he's climbing up the mass of this amazing ship and he's like trying to figure out where he is, right? So just like you're reading the book and you're trying to figure out this character, he's traveling in time trying to figure out who this crazy short seaman is, right? So he said, what is your name? And he said, I am Sir Cristobal Colombo. And he's like, what? And he says again, he goes, oh, you're Christopher Columbus. And he goes, well, yeah, the, the Portuguese call me that, or you English call me that, but I am Cristobal Colombo. And so they're going back and forth and Christopher Columbus is telling him all about the new world. Okay. So I want you to be Christopher Columbus for a second and your new world is Plexus, right? You've started your Plexus products. It's the real deal. You're seeing freaking testimonies all over the place. You see Jessica's testimony. You see Marianne's testimony. You see RJ Reader running in marathons. You see Tara Ruckles, all this like good stuff, right? And you're just like, dad gum, like I want to be a part of that world. So you're a part of this world, right? And you get it. You see what's on the edge of that horizon. You know the world is not flat, right? It's like you see a glimpse into your future and you put yourself there and you're like, I want that life. I want that success. I want that health testimony, right? So I want you to pretend you're Christopher Columbus. So get this, you guys. Did you guys know that Christopher Columbus was turned down? Because back then when you were going to travel across the ocean people thought you were nuts because they thought the world was flat and he was traveling and nobody wanted to invest in this trip so to speak probably lots of gold or lots of money to just get the ships together to get the men together to stock up on food all the things right and so when he went around and asked investors it took christopher columbus 19 years before he finally got the funds to get the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria to go on this journey to this foreign new world from Spain. He was going to North America. And while he is going, I mean, he was turned down by like politicians and kings and queens and princes and princesses and all these like really, really rich people that were just like, you're crazy. No, you know? How many times have someone made you feel crazy for loving this. Um, just so you know, that is never going to go away. <laughs> because as long as someone has a bad taste in their mouth about network marketing, it's up to us to put a good taste in their mouth, right? Have you ever been to a friend's house before that cooked you dinner and they're so excited and you go to eat their dinner and you're like, mm. and you're like about to spit it in your napkin? So imagine that being your first introduction to network marketing. You want to spit it in your napkin. It grossed you out. You don't want a part of it. You don't want to be in that, right? That was my first introduction. Y'all can ask Holly. <laughs> that was so mean to her when she was like, hey, um, this is my pink drink. This is what I'm doing. And I was like, ew, no, ew, no, mm, no. I'm not, don't even, don't even, like, no. And then I was like emailing my husband, even though secretly I wanted to. I was emailing my husband, like, you will not believe what this girl messaged me today. <laughs> but I said that about, anybody about any of the companies, but secretly deep down inside, I had this inkling of hope. So we are on the Santa Maria. We are looking for land. We're at the top of the, um, I can't remember what it's called. If you know what it's called, put it in the chat. It's in the book somewhere, but they're in the top of that thing and they're looking out with the telescope and they're looking to see if there's land and there's no land. And so this is what David Ponder, the main character, that's time traveling. This is what he asks Christopher Columbus. He said, um, do you really like not know where you are? And Christopher Columbus replied, well, does that have any bearing on what I can accomplish? 
And David said, well, what? I don't understand. He said, I have heard that question in one form of, or another since I was a child. Do you know where you are? Do you know what you are? Cologne, you are so uneducated. Cologne, you are poor. You are the son of a weaver. What do you know about the sea? And he shook his head in disgust. Do you know where you are? Is a question that affects me, not in the least. Now, do you know where you are going? That is a question I can answer. So ask me that. So from now on, when someone tells you no, when someone calls you crazy, when someone says, like, what are you doing with this plexus? Say, I don't know. That is the wrong question. Where am I going with plexus? Ask me that. All right. I want you to put your sassy Christopher Columbus pants on because that's how I read this chapter. And you ask people to ask you, where are you going? Tara Ruckel, where are you going with plexus? Where are you going? Y'all, she's going senior Ruby with plexus. She's so close. Carolina, where are you going with plexus? Right? Lily, where are you going with plexus? Marianne, where are you going with plexus? That's the question. Not, do you know where you're going? Do you know what you're doing? Do you even know about gut health? Like, oh my gosh, all the questions. All the questions. But instead say, do you know where you're going? Because we know where we're going. We know the dream. We know the goal, right? And David Ponder said, excuse me? Ask you? Ask me. Do you know where you are going? Ask me. Ask me, ask me, ask me. Okay. David shrugged, do you know where you're going? For the few minutes, the two men had been in the crow's nest. By the way, that's what that thing was called, the lookout, the crow's nest. They had, covered, they had conversed in rather quiet, measured tones. At that point, however, Columbus received the question for which he had been waiting. He boomed out the answer. You guys, I highlighted this because if you don't know where you're going, you're not going to boom out the answer. You're not going to post correctly on social media. You're not going to talk about plexus. Know where you are going. Know what you want out of this plexus business. Like if you're just sitting there and you're like, I guess I get those silver, like a couple hundred bucks would help pay for groceries. I might add my dad or my grandpa. Like know where the hell you're going. Where are you going? What have you been called? Where have you been called? Know where you're going. He boomed out the answer. Carrying across the water, it sounded like the voice of God. Throwing his hand forward, pointing into the western sky, he cried, yes, yes, I know where I'm going. I am going to a new world. He did not care where or when or how he was going to get there, obviously, by boat. He just knew it was a new world. You guys, Plexus is full of so many opportunities and so many new adventures. Does it really matter what or the how or like Tina Fey is a hilarious comedian and she has a quote that says, just do it and figure it out later. It's my favorite quote. It's like on a million t-shirts and Hobby Lobby has paintings, but like, just do it, figure it out later. That's my new mantra for anybody that's like, Emily, I think I'm going to do plexus. I'm like, do it. Let's go. I'm going to sign you up. I have 15 minutes. Let's go. Just figure it out later because it's true. Like, you know what you want. People buy what they want to buy. They want what they want. They know where they're going. So Shivers played up David's spine as he watched the explorer point into the darkness. Can you imagine like going back in time to this guy's moment? Like we already know that he discovered the new world. Like we already know, like, hello, we live here. We know that what he's discovered, but this is before he even got there. And this is how excited he was. After almost half a lifetime of being told no, and you're crazy and don't go. And that's how excited he was. He boomed out that answer of he knew where he was going to a new world. Clearing his throat, David broke the silence. How long has it been since you left Spain, he asked Columbus. 64 days. And today, we shall see land. Look behind us. David turned and saw a brightening in the eastern sky. Dawn will be breaking soon. When it does, directly in front of the Santa Maria, you will see land. Beautiful land with trees and fruit and animals and people who will welcome us as heroes. The water gushing from the ground will be cold and pure. It will sparkle as if sprinkled with diamonds. This will be a place for men's dreams to come true. A glorious new world claimed by Christopher Columbus. In the name of King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. Well, David leaned forward and put his hands on the lip of the crow's nest. That would be uh, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain, right? He said, yes. And they are my financers of this expedition. 19 years, my friend. It took 19 years for this sponsorship. I endured the agony of public humiliation for my convictions to go find a new world. You guys, I'm not saying you're going to discover a new world in your plexus business, but you're going to discover a new world in your plexus business. Let me just paint a picture for you. 
a modern day pitcher. When Scott was deployed, I was 24 years old, a brand new mom, sitting in the guest bedroom of my mother-in-law's house. My baby's crib was shoved in the corner. All my crap was at the foot of the bed in trash bags because we moved all the time. We did anything and everything we could to save money. I was constantly selling my clothes and then going to Goodwill or Salvation Army or somewhere to find something that somebody donated. I was constantly selling furniture and pictures off my wall just to make ends meet. We lived credit card to credit card. There was no paycheck to paycheck. Our paycheck was two grand. And when Scott deployed, as much as it brutally sucked to not have him there for the, our firstborn, our first baby, we needed that income. That's how desperate people get. People rob banks, people rob gas stations, people rob their neighbors because they're so desperate and they don't think there's any other way. You guys have a way. Plexus is $10 to enroll. We know the products work. There's tons of testimonies. If you find someone with enough hope, like Christopher Columbus, like myself, that will just get a little tiny glimpse of that future of this, there's a new way, there's a new world. That's how you develop runners. You vision cast with them. You show them it's there. You just got to take it. You got to claim it. You got to work for it. But it's there. I mean, all these people ranking up to like Ruby and Senior Ruby and Emerald and Diamond, like it's there for you too. It's not just there for them. I mean, I sat at a rank for a very long time when we lost half of our team to another company. And I would get so resentful when people would rank up. Like there's plenty of bread, y'all. Plenty, plenty to go around. It doesn't take away from you if they're winning. And I used to internalize that of, I just suck. I suck. My team sucks. Like I was literally like manifesting that. I was saying that all the time. And that's not true. It was just not understanding the vision casting of it's there. Go take it, Emily Roberts. And if you do it, your team will do it. And look, I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I showed up. Scotty has showed up and then you guys get inspired and y'all show up. Like some of you have either been on our team for a while or you recently rejoined or, um, you know, somebody did a different company and you're like, I want to do it with Plexus or whatever, whatever that story looks like for you. This is your new world. You're the first in your community to have this. So it's going to be foreign. It's going to be weird. It's going to be mocked. There's going to be some humiliation as you navigate the waters and figure it out. Same goes for motherhood and marriage and school and any new job ever. So learn how to jump off the emotional roller coaster and just choose an attitude of gratitude that you get to do this and stop giving yourself like, what, what do you want to call it? Stop like limiting yourself in like putting, um, like a timeline, like, oh, if I'm, if I am not this rank by the end of this month, like I am done. I am so done. I'm done with my team. Like I've heard it all and I've said it too. So I get it. And it is, it hurts. Cause you're like, I've worked so hard. And then you're like one person away or 10 people away. Right. But Columbus in this chapter, which I'm about to get to this last part, he didn't really have an option. They were in the middle of the freaking ocean and it was either turn around and go back and maybe starve and not make it or just keep going and hopefully we hit some land and maybe it'll be new land and not like Europe or something. Like, I don't think he knew where he was going. So David Ponder asked Columbus, are you the only person who believes this? Meaning believes there's land. At the moment, yes, Columbus said, but that bothers me not in the least. Truth is truth. If a thousand people believe something foolish, it is still foolish. Truth is never dependent upon consensus of opinion. I have found that it is better to be alone and acting upon the truth in my heart than to follow a gaggle of silly geese doomed to mediocrity. If that doesn't preach to all them high school people that you went to high school with still doing the same thing, working at the gas station, OMG. When I read that, I was like, that is my hometown. The same people live in there, all marrying, the same people who went to high school with, not exploring opportunity and goals and dreams. Like, they're just doing what their parents did. And like, you know, like, break the stigma, change it up, go find a new world. 
And so David asked Columbus, so like, you don't care that people think you're crazy? My friend, if you watch my Instagram stories, I tried so hard to say this in a Spanish accent and it didn't work. But he said, my friend, Columbus said with a smile, if you worry about what other people think of you, then you will have more confidence in their opinion than you have in your own. Poor is the man whose future depends on the opinions and permissions of others. Remember this, if you are afraid of criticism, you will die doing nothing. Woo, good stuff right there. David frowned, but with so many people against you, how did you get it started in the first place? How many new ambassadors asked you all that? How did, like, how did you just get past the no? Like, I remember somebody getting a no and just like, Emily, I just don't think this is for me. This made me feel really weird and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you've never been told no before, have you, spoiled brat? Like, thinking in my face, I'm like, what? Excuse me? What are you saying? And so this response from Columbus is going to be y'all's new response. Getting started, getting finished, both ends of a journey require a demonstration of passion. You can passionately quit or you can passionately keep going. Which one are you going to do? Which one are you going to do? That'll preach. Yeah. Passionately quit or passionately keep going? Passion, he said again in a forceful whisper. Passion is a product of the heart. Passion is what helps you when you have a great dream. Passion breeds conviction and turns mediocrity into excellence. Your passion will motivate others to join you in a pursuit of your dream. With passion, you will overcome insurmountable obstacles. You will become unstoppable. You will find new land. Um, oh, it's like good stuff. You have to like process that for a second. I already read all this, but it's just so good. So Columbus tells David to turn around and look out into the water. So I want you guys to close your eyes and look into your future. And I want you to look and I want you to look and I want you to look. And so David's looking and he frowned and he's like, Columbus, there's no land. I don't see land. What are you talking about? There's no land out there. And he's like, you don't see that land? And he's like, no. Senor Ponder, Columbus said, you are looking in the wrong direction. Today, you will not see land off the bow of my ship. You will only see land by looking into my eyes. He felt as though he had been tricked. So there's no land. So for you guys, there's no diamond. There's no ruby. There's no silver. There's no gold, right? Yes, there is land. And it is right there. He gestured past the bow of the ship again. I see it plainly as I see you. For almost 20 years, I have seen it, and tomorrow, you will see it. It will come into view just as dawn breaks directly in front of the Santa Maria, a beautiful land with trees and fruit and animals and people who will welcome us as heroes. The water gushing from the ground will be cold and pure. It will sparkle as if sprinkled with diamonds. He just said this a minute ago, right? He's affirming it. If you are not saying nice things to yourself and about your goals and about your dreams, of course they're not going to come true. Of course you're not going to inspire others. If you're not talking about the hard stuff that got you to the new stuff, nobody's going to believe you. When I, I, I shared this last week, or maybe two weeks ago, when I share hard stuff, like yesterday, Scott and I fought all day long. It was brutal. When I share that, though, I always have a new ambassador join. They're like, thank you so much for being honest. Oh, by the way, I think I need that pink drink. And I'm like, what? People want to know you. They want to know the obstacles that you are jumping over to get to your end result, your new land. You have to affirm it. He said, you have to find a heart for success that you did not know existed. And he also says, I see men who don't know the limits that they can reach. You don't know what you're capable of because you haven't gotten there yet, right? How many times, like almost just about all of you have either gotten to silver or senior silver or gold and you get there and you're like, <laughs> and we FaceTime, right? If you're my level one, we FaceTime and you're like, I'm breaking gold or I'm breaking silver. Like, oh my God. And then you're like, okay, what's seven more people? What's three more people, right? Do y'all not freaking do that? Y'all do it every time. And I just love it. And it's because you didn't even know you were capable of that until it happened. And then you reflect back on what it took to get there. And it, 
It reminds me of that meme from The Hangover, but did you die? That's what it reminds me of. Because we didn't die. Yeah, it was uncomfortable. Yeah, there was some growth, but we didn't die. Most people fail at whatever they attempt because of an undecided heart. Should I, should I not, go forward, go back. Success requires the emotional balance of a committed heart. When confronted with a challenge, the committed heart will search for a solution. The undecided heart searches for an escape. So I'm gonna leave y'all with that. Are you willing to search for solutions? Or are you just sitting there spinning your wheels looking for a way out? Looking for a way to message me and be like, Kimberly, just don't know if this is for me, I'm done. You get to decide because the tools are there, the resources are there. It's the heart that matters, your heart to be more specific. So do you have a decided heart, a committed heart? Or are you looking for a way out? And I've said this before, are you interested or are you committed? Same, same thing. A lot of us are interested in uh, Zac Efron's new Netflix series. Because I mean, <clears throat> Zac Efron, right? That is interesting enough. However, I am not committed to binge watching that. I'm just not. Like I am, we're about to be on our way to double diamond as a team. Like I got other things I'm committed to, right? I'm committed to my marriage, but I'm interested in starting CrossFit. I don't think I will, but I'm interested in it, right? There's a difference in interest versus commitment. I want you guys to affirm three to five things. This is what I make my level ones do every, every Thursday. And for those of you that are usually on, I see you like, <laughs> y'all have no idea. So go ahead and start typing them in the chat now. Um, your homework is to use them in a post tomorrow. Tomorrow is Freedom Friday and the last day of the month. You have to talk nicely to yourself. We have, I saw this quote today that says, um, it was just like, I love you. And someone had replied back, why do you tell people that? And she said, if people can hate for no reason, I can love people for no reason. So it's the same concept of just saying nice things about yourself and about others. And so I, I challenge you to get to five affirmations. If you cry, that's awesome. That's bonus points because sometimes it happens. Um, when we talk kindly to ourselves, sometimes we're the only ones that do. Um, it doesn't matter if you're married, doesn't matter if you're a mom, doesn't matter if you're single. Sometimes there's just no one else out there that's going to talk positively to you. So we're going to say some affirmations. I highlighted some that I really liked in the first chapter of this book. And I shared them last week, but I feel there's a lot of new faces. So I'm going to share them again. RJ, don't roll your eyes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Um, I thought it was chapter one. Oh, no, it wasn't. Here we go. Oh, this is my favorite one. I want you to write this down, and then I want you to say it in the chat, because I'm going to take a picture of the chat. But this is your affirmation. I offer perspective. I offer perspective. Your journey is unique to everyone else's, whether it's thyroid related, weight loss related, weight gain related, sleep related, acne related, yeast infection related, whatever, pregnancy related, PCOS, inflammation. You offer perspective on a thing called gut health that no one else can because you have a story that no one else has. So type it out in the chat, I offer perspective. I'm taking a picture of it, so please participate. <laughs> All right, there it is. Okay, cool. And then smile because I'm taking your picture. Great job, everybody. Way to work together. So I offer perspective. You do. Some people know nothing about gut health. I certainly didn't. I was getting ready to go buy some Flintstones from my local grocery store because I thought that was going to help. I was sick of drinking seven Diet Cokes a day. I was sick of feeling like crap. I was 24. 24 years old, not drinking water and thinking about Flintstones. OMG, y'all. We offer perspective. We show people a better way. I hope you know that. And that's not some like crackpot weird affirmation because we're network marketing robots. Like, no, we offer perspective on looking for opportunity and not a J-O-B, right? And you can lose weight by healing your gut, right? We, we can offer perspective in different ways. Somebody that's doing this so well um, is Adelie. I don't know if she's on. She's on in the East Coast and her entire Instagram is dedicated to her IBS and poop. 
And you wouldn't know that unless you read it because it just looks like this really cute Eastern, like East Coast girl. And then you click on it, it's like, so yesterday I had to run to the bathroom and it's because I forgot my probiotic last night. And it's like this story about her poop life, but it's so on point. She offers factual things and articles and she talks about Plexus, but you wouldn't know it's Plexus. And she just completely shifted her whole Instagram about hmm, three or four months ago. And I just love it because it's her story. She's offering a perspective about this is why I use supplements. You may be different. You may be using supplements to lose weight, grow your hair, whatever, but I'm using it because of this. So Adelie's name is underscore. It looks like Adele, A-D-E-L-E, E dot J. So this is Adelie. You can follow her on Instagram and see what I'm talking about by offering a different perspective. It doesn't have to be pink drink selfies for the rest of your life for the love. It doesn't have to be that, okay? It doesn't even have to be pictures of your Plexus products. You could literally say the word poop and catch your audience's attention. I promise you. I know I'm a mom. We talk about poop at least once a month on social media. It's normal. Um, but offer perspective. That's your, that's your first affirmation. Of course, I want you to come up with your own, but I'm going to give you one more before we do this. Um, 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 um. Oh, this is your other affirmation. It's a little different because you're not necessarily like affirming positive. Like it's not positive, it's just factual. My decisions are my choices. I know that one's a little deep, terrible. Goes like preach, but it's true. What you are deciding to do, you're choosing to do. And if you are choosing not to change your habits, if you're choosing not to take your plexus balance before you eat pizza with your family, if you're choosing to drink alcohol instead of water, if you're choosing to go to the movies instead of go to your workout class. You're choosing that. Those are your grown up adult decisions. Plexus does not make anyone gain weight unless their body has an issue that needs to gain weight. There's nothing in our products that will um, increase fat for the freaking love. When someone says, I gained weight, it's been like five weeks. Yeah, you're probably retaining water because you probably partied because we're all drinking quarantinis these days. But Plexus did not make you gain weight, right? So like a lot of people quit because they get these feedbacks from customers or ambassadors. Oh, I gained weight or I did this or whatever. Stand up for your products. Make, how about this for an affirmation? My products freaking work. How about that for an affirmation? Because they do. All of us are proof. We have a team of almost 10,000 people. Did y'all know that? Our products freaking work. They keep working. I've been doing this for six years. When they... Don't work is because I ain't taking them. That's when they don't work. When they're sitting on my counter and I'm like, oh, I got three bottles of Metaburn. I'm clearly not being consistent. I should take that. And I also know because my house is dirty and I'm not getting nothing done, right? Because I'm not focused or energized. I'm staying up late and binge watching Zac Efron and I shouldn't be, right? My decisions are my choices. I have to remember these things. So I want you to keep going. Um, I will make a thread in Rockstars Me Plus Three where you guys can comment all of your affirmations and encourage others to do the same. So I'm going to do that in just a minute. But um, three to five affirmations. I offer perspective and my products freaking work. My decisions are my choices. All of those can be a part of your three to five. If you have different ones, please share them. And then tomorrow your homework for Freedom Friday um, for social media is to find a way to... Um, use these affirmations like in a post, like find a way, like it could just be a, a picture of you. That's just like, I am beautiful. I love my freckles. I'm taking my bio cleanse a day and being consistent, like whatever it needs to be, make those affirmations and post that picture. Um, I feel like it just helps with your confidence and then other people see that. I think that's the number one thing I've heard over the last six years is like, like obviously Emily, you're different, but like no, like you're really different. Like you're not the girl I went to high school with. You're not the girl that got married back in 2010. Like you are so different. And I take that as a compliment and people are going to say that to you too. And for those of you that are like, um, but I'm not different. Well, your decisions are your choices. If you're not taking your products or showing up for yourself, you feel off. And right now, this is what I, I think I told RJ this. I can't remember who I was talking to. I think it was RJ. Show yourself some grace. We're in a really, really weird time. 
and no one, none of us have ever been home this long except for stay at home moms, bless us. But none of us have been home this long for this amount of time with isolation and with fear and with extra doubt and just like, you know what I mean? So have some grace, extend grace to other people who are on your team maybe and they've kind of checked out. Even your strong friends, your strong ambassadors, like we are not okay. We are raising little versions of ourselves and we're losing our minds, okay? So I just want you to think about those things, write out your affirmations, extend grace to others, especially tomorrow. Um, and if you have any questions, of course, you can always message me on Facebook, but you guys have a wonderful night. I will upload this recording here in a minute.